many of you have uh, attended a town hall before? Oh, good. You're all used to all of this. This is our fourth year. We had a session last year, and this will be our fourth year of bringing a report to you each year. And normally, Dean would be here now. I mean, Elder Corey. Dean. Okay. <laughs> would be here now doing devotion, but we're going to change things up a little bit this time. We're going to start out with the a few PowerPoint slides show you a few things about finances, a few things about departmental work. But it's going to be a Reader's Digest condensed version. We're going to move right on through it because you've heard it now for three years in a row and we're not going to tell you the same things over and over. We'll just give you a few updates. After that, we'll have a, a brief moment for questions and answers if you have them at that point. Then we'll have our devotion and go on with the program. So just a little bit different than we have before. And I can tell you that we don't have a presenter mode on here, so Bob and I thought we'd have notes down here to look at. I shouldn't tell you that we don't have them. We're just going to wing it. The first few slides will just show you briefly where we are as a conference financially. And you've seen this slide now. For This will be your fourth year in a row. And you can see from looking that we've stayed pretty stable. Those of you who remember Tom Evans would look at this and tell you green is good, red is bad. At the end of the year, on December 31, that's when this snapshot of, is taken. And so on that day, this is how it looked. We did have some liabilities, and those are the red, that's the red bar. And it's primarily the tithes and offerings that needed to be remitted onto Mid-America Union. And of course, that happened in January. If we took this snapshot mid-month, that red bar would be almost non-existent. Working capital. We continue to be blessed. God has richly blessed this conference and you folks and, and your generosity. Our working capital continues to stay above 100%, which is what is recommended. And as you can see, we continue to climb. At the end of the year, we had some donations of funds that were to be used in the next year. So right there on December 31st, we did have an influx of cash. Each day in 2011, we spent, I can't see that number, $28,445. That sounds like a lot of money, and it is. And you will see that in 2011, we spent more per day than we did in the four previous years. The main factor there is our employee base. In those other years, we had vacancies off and on during the year. In the year 2011, we did not have vacancies. In fact, there were times when we had people waiting in line, so we were doubled up. We, we met our expenses that year, and so they were up. Um, three of the last five years, we've had 193 days of cash at the end of the year. That's about six months, so that's a very stable position. Tithe. Our, big, our major income is from our tithe. About 60% of it stays here. 40% goes on to support other areas of the World Church. And in 2011, we did have over $10 million, which is very good. Uh, that had only happened for us once before in 2008. In 2011, I do need to remind you, we had an extra Sabbath. Without that Sabbath, I don't know if we would have made it, but we'd have been close. This shows what Iowa was, how Iowa Missouri Conference, tithe-wise, fits into the Mid-America Union, 52 million in Mid-America. And you can see the orange piece of the pie there, that is us. And uh, we stay just right about the same proportions every year. I always compare us to Kansas, Nebraska, and I do that because they're the closest to us, have the closest um, membership, churches, and that sort of thing. They are a little ahead of us, but they have some um, institutions and they have some population centers that we don't have, so we're very similar. Into Bob's area now. Conference membership over the past eight or nine years, you can see we've gone from 10-3 up to 11-2, which is a nice jump. It's a good thing if we could keep everybody that comes and nobody would ever leave and we wouldn't have to deal with apostasies and deaths, that would be a good thing. Because you can see in 2011, we added 648, but we also lost 526. So it's hard to, hard to make that gain but we are on a slow trend up. Now, if you've been coming to town hall meetings for the past few years, you've heard us talk about combined drive. Remember what combined drive is? 
don't see any lights coming on. Combined drive? Okay. We don't call it combined drive anymore. We call it combined youth ministries. Just recently, the conference executive committee voted to change the name of it. For many, many, many years, it has been combined drive and it's covered a variety of things in our conference. But as we got to looking at it, right now it's covering youth-related things, education and camp heritage. And so we have changed the name to Combined Youth Ministries. So once a month, you will hear the offering appeal for Combined Youth Ministries. It will be for education and for Camp Heritage. Broken down like this. For every dollar that you give, 50% will go to elementary education, 25% to operating at Sunnydale Academy, and 25% to Camp Heritage. And now we're going to take a little, while we're at this spot, we're going to talk about elementary education, Sunnydale Academy, and Camp Heritage. And Joe is here with us, and he's going to share a couple, three things about elementary education. Uh, we have 16 schools, five in Iowa. Am I supposed to stay in a certain place here? Okay. Uh, 11 in Missouri. We have three ECECs, and ECECs are Early Childhood Education Centers. You probably maybe aren't too familiar with that. You, you had one here at one time, way ahead of everyone else. But uh, the, under the new uh, policy of the North American Division, the ECECs fall under Education Department as well. All of our uh, child centers are in Missouri. The largest uh, one is in Rolla. In fact, Rolla has the largest one in the entire union. I think they have 60 some odd kids in their, uh, in their program. Uh, the smallest one is in West County, I think they have eight kids, and then Columbia comes in about 25, 24. We have 31 elementary teachers, 303 kindergarten through ninth graders, um, and, and that number varies, we're still trying to get a for sure number. But that's up, it's a 3% increase, nine more students than what we ended with last year, so the Lord is blessing there. In fact, um, as we met this morning on the Board of Education, there are 440 students attending uh, K through 12 in our conference. There's 440 students attending K through 12. You can say amen, it's not, that, it's, it's not church, but it's still a thing. 440 kids, we have not had that many kids in our school since 2004. So it's, a, it's growing, continues to grow with Lord blessing. And one of the things that's happening, and many of you, or you're experiencing it right here in Des Moines and other places of pockets, we're getting larger refugee populations in our schools. We have children who have been born in China, Haiti, Jamaica, Mexico, Myanmar, which is Burma, Philippines, Russia, Rwanda, South Korea, Thailand, Ukraine, and Zambia, and probably more that I, some others that I wasn't able to track down. But you can see that we're getting a very uh, mixed group of kids. In fact, I just took a group of kids from Des Moines and from Cedar Rapids to outdoor school. Out of the six, the six kids that I had, one was Caucasian, two were African, three were African, and two were from Burma. And it was very interesting to hear them. They wanted to sing uh, songs in their languages, and it was like, you know, Pentecost there. But, uh, very interesting. And one African girl kept telling the other two girls to speak in Chinese. They said, we're not Chinese, we're Burmese. And so, but we're, we're becoming a very, um, a very uh, multicultural school system. The other thing I want to share with you is the North American Division Teachers Convention that took place in Nashville. The theme was Moving Hearts and Minds Upward. Uh, teachers from all over North American Division, by the way, uh, Guam and Micronesia, are now part of the North American Division, if you didn't know that. Tai Taipei is not quite yet. But uh, this is our third national convention ever in the history of our church. Uh, it happens every six years. It was every five years until they did it just after GC, and they said they'll never do that again. So it's every six years. 6,500 teachers were there, and uh, there were 500 breakouts, as well as a lot of keynote speakers, those that are within the public system public uh, realm and also the, the Adventist system. Every morning we were blessed to have uh, the uh, Elder Nelson from Pioneer Memorial give our worship and an excellent uh, presentation and brought us to the cross each day. Now we're at Sunnydale Academy. We could stop right here and tell a lot of miracle stories, but we don't have time. 
However, our enrollment as we speak is 139. That's what they started with on opening day, and that's what they still have today. Carrie said this morning this is the first time he can remember for a long time that they haven't lost at least one to homesickness or something, but they still have the same 139. So his goal is to end the year with that same 139. We'll see how that goes. We may have 140. But it hasn't been that many years ago when we had an enrollment of 80, 83, and we would sit around the table and say, hmm, are we going to be able to continue secondary education in our conference? What's going to happen? But many things have happened for the good God has blessed, and our school is strong. The tall book, several things, we do several things to support Sunnydale during the year. Several different subsidies, student assistance, endowment, capital, new horizons. But that tallest bar there represents the operating subsidy that we give to Sunnydale during the year. And that is largely supported by the Combined Youth Ministries offering. So it's a very important part of helping with that operating subsidy. And now as the enrollment has increased and things are stabilizing there, their financial position, as we are able to pass along the subsidy, their financial position is improving, stabilizing. They actually have some working capital, which is just, you know, it's been years since they've, since they've had working capital. So things are much better for Sunnydale Academy as well. Lots and lots of stories. Many things have happened. You've probably heard one thing is the greenhouse project that is doing very well. How many of you saw the article in the review? Did you see it? Okay. Things are going well in, on a lot of areas at Sunnydale Academy. Another area in, that the offering supports is Camp Heritage. Bob's going to share that with us. You may realize camp was on sale last year. The, um, in, the enrollment, not the enrollment. Yeah, the enrollment was up, but the cost was down. So we had a lot more kids at camp this summer. Amen. We were just looking at those uh, greenhouses, and uh, Dean and I attended the ASI International Convention, and we're going to receive 10 more greenhouses. And we praise God, that'll give us 20 all together. And these are 120 footers. So uh, another work B will be coming probably in October. So. Uh, we appreciate volunteers. If you uh, have a couple of days that you can spend with us. You know, uh, let me just say one thing about the greenhouses. Uh, Gail, you'll have to help me a little bit where you said, what did you just learn? Am I correct in the fact that the governor of Missouri, his chef, are a catering service who will be serving the governor of Missouri has contacted us as we have been given your name to produce fresh vegetables to us. What could you do? And when the list was given to them, they said, that's what we need. We'll be back with you. So we could be producing the fresh stuff for the governor of Missouri. Wow. Amen. So pray for our uh, vocational work program there. Another area that benefits from the uh, Combined Youth Ministries offering is Camp Heritage, as uh, Rhonda mentioned. And uh, a lot of ministry takes place. This was our summer staff. And uh, they're soul winners. We praise God for uh, the blessings that come through our outreach there at Camp Heritage. This was another one of our capital improvements. We have a what they call this building? Craft, craft. craft building. Where they do crafts. <laughs> it's almost finished. But it's uh, going to be a real blessing. And all that block was uh, donated. And uh, we had a lot of donated labor as well. So uh, God is really blessed. This is why we have the camp. Mm -hmm. Prepare children to meet Jesus and send them out as missionaries. And uh, we praise God for what is happening there at the conference session, you remember, and at our last town hall meeting, we discussed about expansion at Camp Heritage. That's still on our minds. 
But for that to happen, the combined youth ministries offering, we need to reach our goal. What is our goal? Anyone? One percent. One percent of income per member per month. And uh, the reason we haven't reached it yet is most of our members don't even think about it. It is such a small amount. If you have a hundred dollars tied, it's then one percent is what we're asking for what we do to reach our young people around the conference. And so we're asking, uh, we're going to have new tithe envelopes first of the year. And if you look at this slide right here, uh, for years we have averaged about a quarter percent. And we've been coming up the last two years, but Rhonda showed you we had 10 million tithe, that would be 1 million uh, for the combined youth ministries offering if we just had the one percent and so we're encouraging everyone to really think through God's blessings to you and reach the one percent for our combined youth ministries offering we have really taken seriously this statement from Ellen White volume 6 of the testimonies page 27 the home missionary work will be farther advanced in every way when a more liberal, self-denying, self-sacrificing spirit is manifested for the prosperity of foreign missions. For the prosperity of the what? Homework, Homework <coughs> depends largely under God upon the reflex influence of the evangelical work done in countries afar off. We have found that to be true. Uh, we've had people ask us, you know, since you've been focusing on missions at home and abroad, hasn't that, you know, affected our operating capital? Well, as Rhonda has mentioned, we have remained stable. We have not had to draw funds from operating capital. We have had free will offerings given to uh, support this. And several years ago, we thought, you know, we really need a school of evangelism. Dean had been uh, talking about this for a long time and so finally we stepped out in faith we got a commitment to help us to do it and uh, we started a program at Sunnydale Academy where we were focusing on personal and public evangelism and how our young people can be trained in all the areas of service in a church so that when they graduate, they can function in any office. Does that sound good? Well, I want to tell you, it's worked so good that Sunnydale has become a school of evangelism. Amen. Not just a class, but the whole faculty is bought into it, and it is a thrill to be on the campus. Our young people are going from door to door. We have a summer program with a MacBook program. We have Bible workers. We have individuals that are involved in various projects. You remember when the tornado hit in Joplin? Our students went down two weeks in a row while other groups were going to foreign initiatives. They were down in Joplin. They tore down this building that you see there on the left and rebuilt it in two weeks. Can you say amen? God, uh, I tell you, it changes the hearts of these young people when they see the need and God uses them to respond to that need it it impacts their thinking they say well you know God can use me to make a difference in the lives of other people and then they come back to the campus not wanting to be self-serving but to be serving others and we praise God for that one of our projects this year was at Bukema Adventist University in Uganda and uh, we were working with uh, Brother Garwin McNeilis who does the one day church and the one day school and uh, we had your husband with us coordinating this program for building and God blessed us in a mighty way uh, you know on this one campus it staggers your mind but this year, over 100 buildings have been built on that campus. Can you say amen? And we contributed to it. These buildings were built by our students, 
and the staff members that went with us. And you see the uh, girls' dormitory there. The, our students put those bunk beds together and uh, built the building. Uh, they put the tile down after we left. Garwin went in and saw it, and it, it looked good, but he says, girls would be better than boys. And so <laughs> he said this picture, he said, we had to put tile down for the girls. And uh, it really looks nice. We've been doing a project at the same time in the Sunderman Islands for, what is it, Dean? Five years? Six. Six. Yeah, for six we've been in India. But in, anyway, we've been in Sunderman Islands. That Boy, time goes by fast. You know, when we started there, our young people went as missionaries to the Sunderman Islands. Fifty islands that are uh, in that area, 22 are inhabited, and a couple of million people with no Seventh-day Adventists. And today, we have over, uh, over 5,000 Seventh-day Adventists in the Sunderman Islands as a result of the work of our young people. We have a secondary school, and it trains Bible workers, they do the training for the Bible workers. In fact, last year was amazing. The Bible workers that prepared for our students were ones that the kids had won to Christ the year before. I tell you, that is thrilling. And so uh, God has really blessed in the work that uh, is being, has been taking place there in the Sunderman Islands. We'll be going back there next year. Uh, we're also going to go to Tanzania uh, this is an orphanage. The buildings were one-day one church buildings that were donated by Brother McNeilis, and they filled them in with a brick for housing units for the orphans. And they have about 90 children there right now, but uh, they are prepared. They have, they have a big, nice uh, dining hall and kitchen, and they have... Uh, guest houses there now that they have built, but they don't have schools, and the government will limit them. They can't have any more children until they build a school, and then they can have between three and four hundred children there, and they have about 56 acres right on Lake Victoria. It is just a beautiful location, but our project is going to be to build an elementary school. They have dreams in the future for a secondary school, but our first stage is going to be, the first phase will be an elementary school. And so while we have a group that will be going to the Sunderman Islands, at the same time we'll have a group that will be going here. And then Dean, maybe you can tell them just about, uh, when you get up here, a little bit about uh, the opportunity that's opened up in Nepal. And, uh, we also have plans for 2014. Uh, our education superintendent is a soul winner and a missionary. And he came in to Dean and says, uh, our elementary school teachers want to build a school in Africa. And we want to go back to where we built the elementary school. This is a school we built there last year. And they have a piece of property there that will accommodate a preschool, a secondary school, and a brand new church. And so uh, Joe has taken that on as a project with the uh, elementary school teachers. And they'll be doing that project. At the same time, we're planning to build another elementary school at a different location in the same country of Zimbabwe. And so, uh, you know, when we built this last year, Maranatha built another, another school project in uh, Victoria Falls. They were just finishing it as we came. In fact, we took over all the extra supplies that they had the following day after they had the grand opening on Sabbath, on Sunday. We loaded up everything and moved to Lapani. And they had built a preschool, an elementary school, a secondary school, a large church, 
and then at other locations they build churches and other building outbuildings at the same time so they had a magnificent building program there as soon as we finished Maranatha had another project at Seleucid and they built 25 school classrooms there at Seleucid so uh, and then they had some one-day churches built at Bulawayo at the same time in fact part of our group helped build churches in Bulawayo because we finished this early uh, we had such good workers there you know our greatest asset in this conference is people and we praise God for the faithful members in this conference but we also need money uh, we you see our evangelism offerings through the years here and uh, we really shot up there in uh, 2011 uh, the Lord really blessed we had lots of extra meetings many of you held meetings and uh, we praise God for what happened uh, we are a lighthouse and uh, God has challenged us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. That's what we're here for. Amen? Amen. And uh, part of that preparation requires the, uh, the other resource, which is financial, and it comes largely from our evangelism offering. Our request for this year for evangelism outreach within our conference has reached $400,000. Uh, our goal for the offering is 275000 Now, we exceeded that last year, you saw. But uh, we've only raised to date, we're a little behind, 142. Actually, Rhonda was telling me that'd probably be over 150. Uh, by Wednesday, we, we'll know what the actual figure is. But we need to have each church reach their evangelism goals so that we can honor these requests that are coming in for meetings. And uh, God is richly blessing. Well, we want to set aside a little time here for any questions that you've had about what we have just shown or other questions that we can ask Dean to answer. <laughs> You know, that has been something that's been very interesting to us. The administration has been so excited that uh, they have students that say, we want to go to Sunnydale because of their mission program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually had the grandchild of, uh, uh, what's his name there at uh, 3ABN, our director there. Jim Gilly. He was the speaker for graduation last year. Or was it graduation? Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he was so excited about what is happening there at Sunnydale and uh, telling me about kids that are inquiring at how they can go to Sunnydale Academy from Illinois yeah. because of the mission emphasis. And uh, you know, the Lord is really blessed. Uh, we have a number of students that are coming from Kansas, Nebraska, and, you know, their boarding academies closed down, but those students wouldn't have to come to Sunnydale. Uh, they could go to a number of other academies, but uh, we almost have as many coming from uh, there as we have coming from Iowa down to uh to Sunnydale so we we praise God for what's happening and it, it has strengthened our our enrollment appreciate the question any other questions before I turn the time over to Dean okay yes I'm gonna have to remember to do this I just want to speak to the combined drive a little bit just a few one minutes what yes I apply it's gonna be so hard it's gonna be hard but anyway combined youth ministries uh, I just want to say a few things about that, is that it does directly affect the, the youth of our, our conference. But what, what we need to do as a conference 
is that we all need to take responsibility of the Des Moines Seventh-day Adventist School, not just the Des Moines Church. We only have 21 churches that are attached to a school, and we have far more churches that don't have a school. And so combined drive, and you might think at this report, the only time that it benefits anybody that's not going to an Adventist school is camp. Well, that's not true. Uh, we invite students in public school and homeschoolers to outdoor school that we just finished last week. We also invite them to Music Fest on the elementary side. They're also invited to the, the Bible junior Bible camp that will happen in October or in November. And then at Sunnydale, there's two times a year that they are invited to youth a youth rally. And so the combined drive not only goes to benefit kids who actually attend an Adventist school, it benefits every child in this conference who takes the opportunity to, to uh, do those invitations. Last year at Music Fest, we had 15 students, uh, three from public school and 12 homeschoolers that participated in Music Fest. Amen. And through the funding of the Combined Drive, helps us fund education. But what I want to encourage all of you is that the elementary program of Iowa, Missouri is the responsibility of all church members, not just those churches that have schools. And if we get that up there, we can we can benefit students. You you know what it's like, but there's more and more families that are saying we really could use some help. And it's been it's been a blessing to say we can help you. Uh, it's easy to say Sunnydale is our school, and that's that's just a given. But I want you to uh, to think about the fact that all the elementary schools are your schools too.